Okay, my friends, Roger and Mud Fossil University, I mean no disrespect to anyone, but the University of Arizona has an astrobiology department, and they are looking for the origins of life and in the universe. Now, they're taking together a whole batch of different sciences, which was never done before, and I really applaud them for this, and I am fully accomplished at all of those sciences. Now, they looking for how did life emerge, how did the first metabolic networks, translation machinery emerge and evolved, the um, DNA and RNA and all these kind of things. They're looking for the, the deepest questions in science, as I will show you. Now, I have found that a lot of people that say these things do not stand behind that stuff. So I am doing this just to show you that I am sort of putting people against the wall now. Now, I've, this is everybody that I could, not everybody, because i got a bazillion people there, but uh, the president, the vice president, the, all of the educators and so forth, and I say, I have new research on astrobiology and earth science related to biology. I wish to engage my friends with my, you know, I wish to engage with them. I have much to report, eight years researching soft tissue fossils using latest DNA, CAT scans, chemistry. This is my public announcement, so I'm going to show you that in a second. I am reaching out as I see your school speaks about truth. I have truth and this is your area. I also do light research as well and have much new to report. I have the electron flood theory. These pictures are light and accelerating, seen as particles, and number 26 shows the boson that they are looking for, separating from the white fermion. Who will respond? Now, this is my public engagement. All right, now, this is what I am presenting to them, uh, and asking for their assistance, and citing their, their request for engagement. So here it is. All right, here's the um, ASU School of Earth and Space Exploration. It says that the School of Earth and Space Exploration, we've brought together all of Earth and space science into one school. <clears throat> That's absolutely fabulous, finally. Breaking the traditional disciplinary boundaries so that we can ask the biggest questions that we have in science, and then we're going to answer them. We're combining the strengths of science, engineering, education to set the stage for a new era of exploration. Thank God. All right, let's listen to what they have to say. All of space and earth science into one school, We've broken down the traditional boundaries so that we can ask questions that individual disciplines can't ask on their own. All of the students in the School of Earth and Space Exploration have chances to look at many different topics of research and to interact with many faculty. And we also want you to bring your ideas. We want to make it possible for you to pursue the things that you want to pursue. We're deeply committed to education. every second of this. Here at CC, you can learn about astrobiology and understand the relationship between life and a planet. We're looking at the future in terms of climate and water supplies. We have one of the largest meteorite collections in the world, perhaps the largest one in any university. We have some of the best facilities in the world for building flight instruments that go to other planets and to create new understanding of life on Earth. We're capturing new images of the surface of the moon all the time, helping us to understand the history of meteoroid bombardment on the moon, how its crust was formed, and discovering details that have never been discovered before. We are at the very center of the community, trying to understand whether Mars is habitable, maybe even in the present day. Here at CC, we've broken the traditional disciplinary boundaries so that we can ask the biggest questions that we have in science. We're combining the strengths of science, engineering, and education to set the stage for a new era of exploration of the Earth, of the universe, and of the future. 
I am just loving this. Okay, that sounded absolutely fabulous. Now, here's what we need to do, first of all, then, is to understand what we're looking at here in the Sahara Desert. That is a gigantic fish. And that gigantic fish was being attacked, and the gigantic dragon spit out stuff on its back to try to kill it. And this is the gigantic dragon. And that gigantic dragon's throat runs all the way down here, and this is the gigantic dragon scales in the gigantic dragon throat, and it runs down and 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 down. And at one point down here, it appears that something slashed its throat way, way, way down here. Boom, right there. And it bled out here in the desert from its dragon scaled throat. And that dragon runs all, all the way over to the Mediterranean almost. There's the other side of his tail. And it's bleeding off transition metals. Now, this I also understand is transition metals because transition metals are the things that make life function. No transition metals, no life. That's how everything is carried around through your body. And I can prove every statement. I all right, I'm not going to bother showing this entire thing is 17 minutes long. And I'm going to leave this one up. It's called University of Arizona Astrobiology Searches for Life. And that's what they're sta stating they are looking for. Now, I know this is very, very unusual evidence that nobody has expected before. And that's okay. And these are the Mars blueberries. And those are the uh, biology and so is the Mars crab and these are the um, layers of muscle and these are the um, oh boy I can't remember the name of them um, I show it in here ah oh boy I can tell you my mind is going bad but this is interstitial, and all those balls all over the place, those Mars blueberries, and these moky marbles are from those interstitial. You see the balls right here? That's the balls. Everything else erodes away. And we have so much of this information. The same thing with the um, Morse code on Mars. That's nothing but interstitial. You know, the, the giant creatures. You saw, you saw what I showed you. And this is my electron flood theory. Nothing but electrons exist. This is, uh, oops, and that's, that's accelerating light. That's a normal red laser. That's accelerating through a venturi. That's the Higgs fields. These are the photons. They're asking for people that have all these different areas of expertise, and I do. I understand a periodic table intimately, and it is fully un understood at the moment. And I understand the accumulation of chemistry and why it focuses in on these different colors and different areas of the tissues. Uh, what else do we have here? I have uh, DNA reports on giant human beings. That's a giant fingertip. And I want to point out something right now. This is a new species called Notos. Um, this is a giant fingertip. Now, this was CAT scanned, DNA tested, and I want to point out somebody that really needs to be looked at as a hero, and that is Jesse Garant and Associates to do the CAT scanning. They did seven CAT scans for me. Very, very reasonable, very, very wonderful people to work with. Jesse Garant and Associates. I'm going to show a link to his site. And if you, because right now, this is going to become hugely important. And if you want CAT scans done, those are the people to talk to. So anyway, um, and then uh, Gil Headley did the anatomist stuff, and he is absolutely fabulous. A PhD, owns his own autopsy school. And this is the actual bosons, the black parts of the bosons separating from the fermions after we accelerated the light and exploded it. So if they want somebody that has all this expertise, I have it. And I want to share it, and I want to be sitting at the table. That's what I expect. I mean, if they're really looking for this information, and, and, and again, I have not approached Arizona University, University of Arizona, but, you know, Harvard, Yale, all, they couldn't care less. They have no interest whatsoever. I bombarded them 
just like I do right here with um, University of Arizona. I'm, I'm sending it to everybody I can find almost there. Well, like I said, they got a bazillion people, but I sent, I don't know, 20, 25 people, but it was somewhere around there. And uh, I expect to have somebody contact me back. I would expect that. And I will keep you informed about this because I am not going to let this go. We need to get reality in education. And um, I'm hoping Arizona, University of Arizona, is going to be the first one to really engage and embrace reality. Not run and hide from it. But I, again, I will keep you informed. All right. I love you all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as I said before, I did have some bad experiences with CAT scans, but not with Jesse Garan. NDT, a metrology-based company. We primarily started out offering CT scanning inspection services and for first article inspection. X-ray technology allows for a quick 2D internal capture at a relatively reduced cost of scanning allows for a high point cloud data capture on the external geometry of the part compared to CT which provides 3D. Look at this. I mean these guys really know what they're doing. These are Jesse Grant and Associates. These are the people to get a hold of. Internal. We work with manufacturing industries such as aeronautical, space, defense, automotive, oil and gas, and more recently add to manufactured parts. We welcome the opportunity to work with manufacturers who have an immediate inspection need for either failure investigation or part qualification, or companies looking to adopt our third-party inspection services on a larger scale. We look forward to setting a long-term partnership with your company well into the future. These guys do racing car engines, all kinds of things. Fabulous. I give them all the applause. Believe me, I've been, I've been doing 50 years, I've been doing research and working with all kinds of different research facilities, and um, these people are top shelf. Okay, I talked about Jesse Grant. Now, this goes back five years ago, and, you know, they did seven CAT scans for me, and I cannot say enough good things about them. This, because not only can they see inside, they show you the surface features as well and really highlight them. Like, um, let me see, this is, this is what's inside these fingers, that's the apical tuft. And now, you see here, look, this, actually, this is the fingertip right here that we had done cat skin. Now, you look at it and you say, well, that looks just like a chunk of dirt. Well, no. You can actually see the finger, fingernail, where the fingernail was here. And you can see all of the blood vessels inside, but you can see the surface features very, very well. Um, absolutely phenomenal work they did. And this is the pad on the bottom, and these are the pads of the, um, which is this right here. So you have the same things on your hand, your fingertip. This is the very tip of a thumb, the uh, left thumb we determined it was. And I, again, I had CAT scans and I had Gil Headley look at it and, you know, the DNA and all that. And we're going to go through all these people to help because they did fabulous help. And without these people doing, because the, I had a hard time finding people to stand up and do the work. See, here's all, all the blood vessels going through the fingertips and so forth. Very, very outstanding work, and I can't thank them enough. And this is the palm of the hand that the fingertip came from. I have the knuckles, I have all kinds of stuff. I have feet, all kinds of things. A ton of different stuff from, and you know, I, and I, we did all the work, so it's not something, it's, it's no guesses here whatsoever. Okay, this is Gil Headley, and he did the anatomical uh, autopsy work, basically. And um, I worked with him, and he's fabulous, fabulous guy. He's PhD, and we started out, really, what's the fuzz? And that was the fascia, because fascia coats all of the, uh, hold on, this, this was DNA certified, all right? That's a lung. And it's all of these things were coated with the fascia, and I'm thinking the fascia is what f facilitated the fossilization. That's what I was going to call it, fascia facilitated fossilization. Well, 
that's Gil was the only one that knew about fascia. Let me just put it that way. And fascia does separate all of the things from all the other things in your body. So that's what happens when they when they get this wet fossilization process. Everything separates from everything else along these fascial planes. Um, but I ended up calling it mud fossils. Anyway, that's Gil, fabulous guy. If you need any anatomical information, he's the guy to, to get a hold of, Gil Headley. Now, this is the guy that did our DNA work, and he was absolutely fabulous as well. Helix Biolabs, and I know he got assaulted for working with us, which everybody does. They will attack you for trying to expose truth. That's why I sort of didn't talk too much about the people that did these things. And now it's time to start talking because it's now going to be accepted. And they are going to be seen as the heroes for standing up, putting themselves in, in harm's way. And I applaud him for his work. And it was absolutely fabulous. I worked with him several months. Now, this is, uh, I had three samples done. And I showed you one of the, I showed you the lung, I think I did, and the fingertip. Uh, and this was all done with bacterial DNA, ancient extraction kits, and all incubation, and all kinds of things. PCR, qualitative PCR analysis, and, and he goes through all of the different papers that they used in the different time frames and sequences, and temperatures, and extractions, and all that stuff. And it was, it, it was a, I did the extraction myself of the the DNA and it came from deep within the samples of arterial place because I know where the arteries and veins are so it, it all came back that they were positive for this these two different places the homo sapien uh, mitochro my, mitochondrial cytochrome B gene and the mitochondrial D loop region so that signifies that they are and he what he said is a hundred percent modern human even though they are giants and one of them was so giant that well I'll show you the fingertip from that one but these are all the sequences and then they sent all of this stuff off and they did a blast uh, at another place Eaton bio labs I believe it was and you know it's a certified test and um, Helix Bio Labs and this uh, Tom uh, Pashenko, I think is his name. He he's going to be seen as a hero because nobody else would do the tests. They refused. They absolutely refused. And I know he's been assaulted. And again, I thank him as a hero, and he will be seen as a hero. I know, you know, pain sometimes is gain, and that's just the way it works. Because I can tell you, I've seen a lot of pain. <laughs> But I'm telling you what, to learn what I have learned is that's the only way you're ever going to learn it is to go through that rain of fire because it's going to come down. Now, Rod Warren is another one that is a hero. It's a, the, the, he just posted a bunch of pictures of light. He's an experimenter guy. D didn't think much of it probably other than they were kind of interesting looking. Everybody laughed at him just like they laughed at everything I posted. But when I saw it, I knew what he had, and I investigated, and this leads to better results than CERN has. And I show that. We actually can see the boson that they are looking for. And I present this over and over. Rod, you did a fabulous job, my friend. Okay, as you can see, 1,715 papers have mentioned my name and 140 highly cited papers have my name in it. Whatever they're saying about me, I don't know. However, there is buzz about this new research. Problem is, is you end up with peer review, which crushes anybody that brings forward anything that's new. Because they say, oh, no, 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 they, you're, all your peers say you're an insane person. So that person is crushed. And probably most of these people that have mentioned me are in trouble. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the way it works. I'm just off fact. Look up the Velikovsky case. Emmanuel Velikovsky. He was the poster child for academic abuse. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you. I love you all.